So big news last week, Kaspersky deletes itself and installs Ultra AV for all those customers in the US because of course they were banned in the United States. The question of course is what is Ultra AV? Is this Kaspersky with a different skin, which is what a lot of people are suggesting? And is it any good? And should people in the US use it? Because if you're using Kaspersky before, this is what would automatically be installed in its place. The answer is no, you should not be using Ultra AV. And I'll tell you why. We did a real in-depth investigation of what this product is and if it has anything to do with Kaspersky. So we looked into all of their program files, if it has any Kaspersky engine, any Kaspersky components, and it does not, which is a shame because Kaspersky was actually a good product. But if we look at this particular application, we check the digital signatures, it's signed by a company called Max Secure Software India. We did some digging into this and it turns out this is indeed a security company but spoiler alert, it's not a very good one. One of our community members did test this out and got the system pretty badly infected. As you can see, these are the second opinion scan results. We've got quite a bit of malware detected by Hitman Pro, Power Razor, and MCSoft, a lot of Trojan Imotat on the system. But also, the quality of the product is nothing like Kaspersky. This is a whole different kettle of fish. The UI itself is clunky. Like, look at me, just reopen it. <laughs> I don't know why it launches CMD. And if we check the security section, there's really nothing in here. And they literally have a section called advanced settings, like not advanced settings, but advanced settings. Like they can't even get the English right in the UI. There's no behavioral components. It just has a setting to protect system registry. God knows what that means. Half of the product isn't even there. It's coming soon. I do not recommend anybody use this program. If you were a customer of Kaspersky in the US, please go through our catalog of videos watch reviews if Malwarebytes, Sophos, Bitdefender, pick a different security solution because this ain't it. For everybody else, of course, I will continue testing Kaspersky. If you're wondering what my thoughts are on the ban itself, I made a full video detailing this, the reasoning behind the US banning it, whether I agree or disagree with it. Unlike a lot of people, my opinion on such things is usually nuanced, so you will have to watch the 13 minute video if you wanna find out my thoughts on the actual ban. I released this two months ago. This is a really good in-depth video if you're interested in learning about it, so do watch it. But I'm not gonna talk more about the ban in this video. I'm based in the UK, so this ban does not affect me, and I will continue testing Kaspersky products for everybody else who's not in the US. But we did do some further digging into the Ultra AV product, and it does seem like it's definitely associated with Mac Secure, because sometimes you get this uh, notification when you have it installed, it uses the old name. And we also did a string search for Kaspersky. So if you look through all of the files that it has, there is no mention of Kaspersky other than in a file that's called comp safe list and some YAR rules. So again, funnily enough, if we examine the application, it actually has a list of safe companies as an INI file. So overall, it's just very strange how this application is coded. It looks like a very immature software. It's just not well designed at all. And again, it is nothing like Kaspersky. There's a long chat where we actually went through all of the you know, design decisions and the programming behind this AV and it's just not good. Don't use it. I have no idea why Kaspersky chose to replace themselves with this particular company. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that in the comments. If we do some more digging, like the details for this application it says it's copyrighted by Aura, which is a company in the US that does kind of like identity protection and they do bundle an AV. So I think this is like something in transition, maybe a new company is coming up. I tried to go down this rabbit hole and try to figure out what's actually happening here. It's too confusing. It seems like Aura bought a specific antivirus engine to use for their whole package and then something separated off. It's, uh, it's, it's a mess. Based on what I've seen, uninstall it. If you're one of those unfortunate people who had to, who got their protection downgraded from Kaspersky, which is frankly very good based on our latest test to this. And I mean that purely from a security and objective testing standpoint, not talking about how safe it is to use a product that may have ties to Russia. That's a whole different discussion. Like I said, watch my other video for it. But I hope this video helps clarify what the switch is all about, what Ultra AV is, and whether you should continue using it if you're previously subscribed to Kaspersky. And the answer is no. I really have a simple answer like that, but uh, this is one of those situations. It's very important to have clarity of information when something like this happens overnight. And I did see a lot of 
of threads of people assuming that because Kaspersky automatically switched over to this, maybe it was just the same product, but they got around the US restriction somehow. There's no evidence of that. In fact, all of Kaspersky's infrastructure, including the Kaspersky security network, all of that, it doesn't work in the US anymore. The only way to maybe access some of that protection would be if you're using a VPN. I haven't really seen any kind of evidence that Kaspersky is going to continue operating in the US in some other name or something like that. So like I said, do share this video because a lot of people don't know. Don't forget to subscribe for more cybersecurity content. And we are having a lot of events on our Discord, link down below. Also, a critical aspect of cybersecurity is always intrusion prevention. And it's worth checking out our sponsor CrowdSec if you're interested in looking at an open source solution to that. CrowdSec have what I like to call a versatile intrusion prevention platform that's extensible for any kind of use case and also comes with their own crowd power threat intelligence. So you can find out filtration attempts. You can look at the IP addresses in your region and blacklist them. And the best part is it integrates with various different systems. So you can use Windows Firewall as a bouncer. So with their security engine, you have the option of adding remediation components, We've got Windows Firewall here, but you can do something similar on Linux. And this is going to automatically alert you in various scenarios for certain exploits. If somebody tries to get in, if you got a Fortinet CVE, it's also going to work for your routers and your network. It can even block RDP attempts if an attacker is trying to remote into your system. So if you're hosting a file server doing anything like that, it's going to be super interesting to try out. And if you just want to learn how systems like this work, it's a great place to start because like I said, it's open source and it's extensible. So check them out using link in description or go to crowdsec.net. You can sign up for free, no credit card required. And once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.